Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of thanks and respect to the Commander in Chief of Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, for his humanitarian and tolerant stance, which led to commuting the death penalty in the Terror Case 1 of 2017. His Majesty the King wished the Commander in Chief abundant health, lauding his noble stance, which has deep significance in epitomizing the culture of forgiveness and tolerance. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, is finalizing the training sessions planned for the Bahrain Triathlon team that is set to participate at the Ironman North American Championship in Texas to be held tomorrow. The championship is expected to witness a wide participation from international, professional and amateur athletes. His Highness Sheikh Nasser and the Bahraini team concluded their swimming training in addition to the cycling and running training before heading to the race's location to be familiarized with the site. On this occasion, His Highness affirmed that the Ironman North American Championship is highly ranked among other races for its challenges. His Highness pointed out to the importance of the Bahraini participation in the championship that shall solidify the kingdom's presence in international sports events, as well as introducing the participants to Bahrain triathlon team and the achievements the team has made during the past recent years, as well as provide the team the opportunity to showcase their highest levels of skill. His Honor Sheikh Nasser added that the team has reached its best level through the efforts and dedication of its members, who spent long hours in training to achieve an honorable result in the race. The Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and Foreign Affairs Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa have taken part in the International Conference on Fighting Terror Financing. The conference was held by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, in Paris under the title theme, No Money for Terror, which was also attended by the French President Emmanuel Macron, ministers and experts from various countries and the institutions and organizations concerned. The meeting aimed for concerted efforts to continue to combat terrorism in view of the new developments in the modus operandi and strategies of terrorist groups, including the creation of new ways to finance terror. After the opening speeches, the meeting was held in the form of a round table. The Interior and Foreign Ministers took part in the first session entitled, Where Does Their Money Come From? Tracking Terrorist Networks and the second session entitled, Blocking Terrorist Financial Flows, The Next Step. The Interior Minister, in a speech, informed the participants about the terrorist activities witnessed by Bahrain in the last few years and the UN member state responsible for it, Iran. He said that in 2015, for reasons linked to violations of banking laws, the Central Bank of Bahrain had to place the Future Bank, which operated in Bahrain under its administration. It was proven that it worked as a terrorism financing center. The Interior Minister said that investigation discovered that Future Bank's management was involved in the following violations. Laundering $4.7 billion through wire stripping swift messages, laundering $2.7 billion through an old method of interbank messaging, using hard one-time codes and physical delivery, granting international business loans, 
issuing letters of credit and trade finance guarantees, as well as other activities worth $1.5 billion that violated the international law and dispersing funds through illegal means in Bahrain to strengthen the Iranian influence in the country. He added that this amounted to almost $9 billion discovered within a few months by banking inspectors. He also highlighted his support to the formation of the International Counterterrorism Financing Center in Saudi Arabia and looked forward to cooperate with the institution. He concluded that for the completion of the counterterrorism agenda, work should be through two paths. The first is fighting terrorism financing, while fighting extremism should be the priority. In the same context, the interior and foreign ministers attended the third session on fighting organized crimes and to dry up the sources of terrorism financing, and the fourth session on fighting them with more active methods. The foreign minister, in his remarks, spoke about Bahrain's long experience in fighting terrorism financing, its successes in stopping suspicious financial transactions, and its readiness to pass its experiences on to friendly countries, and said it would continue to coordinate with all countries and international organizations to eliminate the issue. He added that Bahrain was among the first countries for making a call to fight terrorism financing and had held an international conference in the subject in Manama in 2014. He stressed that Bahrain had been dedicated to fighting the dangerous phenomenon through drafting and developing its laws to meet the international laws and norms and by exchanging information with friendly countries to check the risks posed by terrorism and its financing. He added, Bahrain wasted no efforts to cooperate and coordinate with the friendly countries to exchange the relevant expertise. At the end of the conference, the French president asserted in a speech that Daesh and Al-Qaeda are the two corners of terrorism, adding that the current battle against terrorism is a field one and an approach should be determined to dry up the sources of terrorism financing. And along the sidelines of the International Conference on Combating the Financing of Terrorism, the Minister of Interior met with his French counterpart, Girard Coulum. The minister expressed his thanks to the French Interior Minister for his invitation to attend the important international conference. He also discussed the topics discussed by the conference and the importance of strengthening international efforts to combat the financing of terrorism. And the Interior Minister also met President and Vice President of the French Bahraini Friendship Society and held a meeting with Senator Jean Bizet to strengthen relations between Bahrain and the GCC countries and the French Senate. During the meetings, the Interior Minister asserted the importance of counter-terrorism efforts, hoping France will be able, through the taken measures, to fight terrorism and its financing sources, especially through the development of laws. The French parliamentarians asserted the wisdom of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, highlighting their dedication to promoting cooperation between Bahrain and France, including in the security field and the continuation of the international efforts to counter terrorism financing. Some 500 experts and 80 ministers from more than 70 countries had gathered in Paris to discuss ways to combat the financing of Al-Qaeda and Daesh at the international conference titled No Money for Terrorism. The participants issued a final statement, Paris Declaration, stating the importance of an integrated approach to combating terrorism and its financing with the protection of joint efforts to fight terrorism financing. They affirm the commitment to stop the funding of individual terrorists and terror groups that are linked to Daesh and Al-Qaeda. A number of measures have also been adopted, including the strengthening of the domestic legal and operational framework for the collection and analysis of information by national authorities. The Minister of Information, Mr. Ali bin Mohammed al rumehi participated in the 19th Arab Radio and Television Festival, hosted by Tunisia from the 26th to the 29th of April. He was honored in the opening ceremony with the Arab States Broadcasting Union, Asbu's Shield, in tribute for his efforts to boost pan-Arab media work. He also took part in honoring prominent Arab figures in media in recognition of their active contributions to developing the media and telecommunication sector in the Arab world. The information minister met on the sideline of his participation in the festival with the Tunisian culture minister, Mohammed Zain Al Abidin and thanked him for the distinguished organization of the festival, which is considered as a major achievement for Tunisia. 
They also discussed bilateral cooperation in various fields. The information minister also met the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem and the Palestinian territories, Sheikh Mohammed Hussein, and underlined Bahrain's unwavering stance in supporting the Palestinian issue. A ceremony celebrating Bahrain's long-standing heritage opened yesterday under the patronage of Her Highness Sheikh Lulwa bint Khalifa Al Khalifa, daughter of His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. The Children and Mother Welfare Society is holding the event under the theme Bahraini Customs and Traditions at its headquarters in Isa Town. The event featured many activities in addition to folklore songs that reflect Bahrain's deep-rooted culture. Her Highness Sheikh Lulwa hailed Bahrain's long-standing heritage, commending Bahraini society's keenness on preserving its culture and traditions. She stressed the importance of such an event, which she said highlights Bahrain's authentic traditions and informs the new generations about their father's and forefathers' heritage and consolidate the national identity. She stressed the importance of conserving heritage, paying tribute to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his directives to preserve Bahraini traditions and passing them down the generations so as to further bolster national identity. The Children and Mother Welfare Society Chairperson, Sheikh Hind bin Salman Al Khalifa, thanked Her Highness Sheikh Alulwa for the patronage, hailing her keenness on supporting the educational institutions, Majid al Zayani Quran Center, and other activities and programs. Her Highness Sheikh Alulwa bin Khalifa Al Khalifa received a commemorative memento from Sheikh. Haya bint Ali bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. A dinner banquet was then held at the invitation of Her Highness, the daughter of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister. The Bahrain Center for Strategic International Studies and Energy, Dirasat, in collaboration with the National Information Center today, held a consultation workshop, bringing together all segments of society interested in the field of sustainable development to exchange views on the National Voluntary Report on the implementation of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs Under Secretary for International Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Dirasat, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, stated that the consultation workshop will serve as a truly collaborative platform for the exchange of ideas, in addition to further enhancing citizens' participation in the Kingdom's comprehensive development. The Deputy Chief Executive of Statistics and Population Register at the Information and E-Government Authority, Dr. Nabil bin Mohammed bin Shams, stated that the establishment of the National Information Center, formed under the chairmanship of the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, will do much to boost the sustainable development. The resident representative of the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, in Bahrain, Amin al-Sharqawi, praised the measures Bahrain has taken to incorporate sustainable development into its programs and celebrated the opportunities available to citizens to have their aspirations for sustainable development reflected in the voluntary report. Dr. Sheikh Khaled bin Khalifa Al Khalifa chaired yesterday the first meeting of the Board of Trustees of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence. The Deputy Chairman Samir Al Baharna and Betsy Matheson Board members and Secretary General attended the meeting which was devoted to following up on the Center's establishment processes. The Board members lauded the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the Center and his efforts to consolidate coexistence, tolerance and peace across the world, which they said will reflect positively on the Center's activities and programs. The meeting discussed the Center's upcoming establishment phases so as to implement its social, intellectual, scientific and media goals. The meeting also discussed the Center's upcoming activities and events in which the Center will be involved at the local and international levels. Those activities aim to disseminate the principles of coexistence, tolerance and peace, as well as promote the Center's message to the world calling for consolidating openness and moderation as an integrated approach. The Board of Trustees approved the inauguration of the King Hamad Kingdom of Bahrain declaration platform as the center's maiden event. Gulf Air celebrates the delivery of its first Boeing 7879 Dreamliner, the first aircraft in the carrier's new livery. More details in the report with Yasmin Ibrahim. Gulf Air celebrated the delivery of the first 787 Dreamliner for the national carrier of the Kingdom of Bahrain. 
The delivery is a historic moment for Gulf Air and Bahrain, and yet another important step in the kingdom's strategic direction towards furthering Gulf Air's fleet modernization process, supporting the network and the overall passenger experience enhancement strategies. We're very proud and honored in this memorious day in the history of Gulf Air to receive our first 787 Dreamliner to be commissioned into the fleet of Gulf Air uh, as early as next week. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to wish His Majesty King Hamad, uh, His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, our sincere gratitude and appreciation for the support they have extended to Gulf Air and for the honor of giving us the responsibility to manage the national carrier of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, Gulf Air uh, carries the flag of Bahrain around the world. Uh, we have a responsibility not just to promote the airline but to promote the nation. Uh, and with the growth of Gulf Air, we think we'll play a vital role in promoting tourism, uh, business, uh, industry and connectivity to the rest of the world. The 787 Dreamliner applies breakthrough technologies to an all-new airplane design. The advanced features of the 787 increase efficiency, simplify airplane ownership and operation, and significantly improves the air travel experience. Well, this is indeed a very historical moment, both for the uh, Gulfer and the Kingdom of Bahrain. This is the most sophisticated aircraft at the moment in the world, and uh, it features 26 uh, business class Falcon Gold seats and uh, 256 economy which is both which is basically premium economy class according to the industry standards we have the biggest pitch and the biggest screen same goes for uh, uh, our falcon gold it's actually first class seat about according to the old industry standards it's 89 pinch it's it's a it's a 23 uh, inch uh, uh, monitor and uh, the, the but what is most important of all the experience of flying is so relaxing, so comfortable. This flight is, I mean, this is, uh, uh, this year is year of change. And uh, this is, uh, this flight and this uh, aircraft is beginning of realization of our all main strategic uh, goals, which one of them is very important to us, and that is to be best in class. Gulf Air joins the growing number of airlines operating the 787 Dreamliner across the Middle East and is to take on the delivery of four more Dreamliners this year. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim.